this video is about the important points which you should study and cover from the 45 days revision batch timetable so every day we'll be uploading a small video regarding the important points from that particular days uh, topic of the timetable so this is for the week 1 first day is uh, diseases of pulp and periradicular tissues so from that topic what all you should have at least covered you must cover these topics and the MCQs related to those particular points. So from the diseases of pulp and periradicular tissues, first you should read about the classification of pulpal diseases. So classification in the sense you should know about uh, what is reversible and irreversible pulpitis and the difference between them. So removal of stimulus. When you remove the stimulus the pain goes it is reversible whereas even after removal of the stimulus, if the pain persists, then it is called as an irreversible pulpitis. Then you should also know about uh, the chronic and the acute pulpitis. Uh, chronic pulpitis, chronic hypoplastic pulpitis, the other name is pulp polyp. Uh, so the images of pulp polyp and how it looks, it is an image based MCQ. So you should read about that. And after that, you should go to the sequelae of pulpal disease. Just get an idea of how the pulpal disease progresses then you should know about the internal and external resorption how it presents clinically so internal resorption uh, presents as a pink tooth uh, so you should know about that and uh, the reasons for an internal and external tooth resorption then you should know about uh, the sequelae of periradicular disease how it progresses you should know about uh, acute periapical lapses and a chronic periapical lapses whether it is symptomatic, asymptomatic, when, it, when there is an acute exacerbation of a chronic abscess, then it is called as phoenix abscess. And you should know about condensing osteitis, how it presents radiographically, and also about a radicular cyst, the difference between a cyst and an abscess and a granuloma. And you should read about cracked tooth syndrome, how it presents clinically, how you identify it, and uh, about tooth sleuth, tooth sleuth is an image based MCQ. So tooth sleuth is a device used for uh, diagnosing the cracked tooth syndrome. You should know about the image of it and the management of pulpal disease. You should read about pulp capping. You have direct pulp capping and indirect pulp capping. Then you should know about pulpotomy, a partial pulpotomy also called as spec pulpotomy. Then you should know about complete pulpotomy, then pulpectomy, pulp revascularization. Under that, you should know about what is a PRP, that is platelet-rich plasma, then what is PRF, platelet-rich fibrin. Uh, just read about apexification, apexogenesis. You will be again reading that in pediatric endodontics, but then you should be just aware of it. So all the points which I mentioned right now, you should at least be aware of what it is. No, no need to do uh, deep research about it and studying in depth about it but at least you should know what it is and where it is used or how it is done or how it is used all those things if you read it is more than enough so just a quick brush up apical granuloma radicular cyst and abscess so periapical granuloma and abscess uh, they clinically present with the same signs and symptoms and it is quite difficult to differentiate even radiographically, it is difficult to differentiate. A small uh, finding which you can notice, abscess has a little uh, ill-defined margin, whereas granuloma has a, 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 a neat, well-defined margin, but it is not always necessary that it has to be a corticated margin. Whereas radicular cyst will definitely have a corticated margin and the size is large. Some textbook says it is uh, 1 cm is a margin. So, if it is less than 1 cm, it is either abscess or granuloma. More than 1 cm, it is uh, periapical cyst or radicular cyst or dental cyst. Both means the same. Then, phoenix abscess, which is also known as acute exacerbation of a chronic periapical abscess. You should read about that. Then, uh, what is an internal uh, resorption? So, internal resorption radiographically presents as a uh, large uh, enlarged canal in one particular region so that uh, denotes the internal resorption whereas external resorption radiographically presents as uh, a loss of an external root surface then uh, you should know about the innervation for the pulp uh, what is the difference between a delta fiber and the c fiber which one is myelinated which one is unmyelinated it is a very important mcq point most often they ask uh, the pain responsible the the fiber responsible for hypersensitivity is a delta fiber the pain responsible for sharp 
stabbing pain uh, related to sensitivity and uh, the pulpitis the sharp pain is related to adelta fibers whereas uh, the the chronic gnawing pain is uh, c fiber and also another uh, mcq point is the pain uh the fiber responsible for the pain induced by when you are giving a local anesthesia that pain is due to c fiber whereas the pain caused by the sensitivity uh the temperature is a delta fiber whereas the pressure related the vibration is related to a beta whereas touch sensation is both a beta and a delta so just remember something related to sensitivity the pain is a delta whereas the a pain related to local anesthesia which you are giving it is related to c fibers then you should also know about fish zone so fish zone of uh, the periradicular tissue uh, in case of uh, well defined granuloma how the zone is so from the inside to outside it is you can remember by the mnemonic icis icis zone of infection zone of contamination then zone of irritation zone of stimulation so from mcq point of view what you should know is for zone of infection it is it mainly comprises of uh, po polymorphonuclear neutrophil that is it contains mainly neutrophils neutrophils are responsible for the uh, primary infection whenever an infection comes very first neutrophils will accumulate then slowly the lymphocyte will come so from the mcq point of view you should know zone of infection mainly contains all the neutrophils then comes zone of contamination where you have more of a lymphocyte then comes zone of irritation in zone of irritation you have more of osteoclastic activity whereas in zone of stimulation you have fibroblast and osteoblast so this is important from mcq zone of infection you have neutrophil zone of contamination you have lymphoblast then zone of irritation you have macrophages and osteoclast under zone of stimulation you have fibroblast and osteoblast then you should know about what is barodontalgia so barodontalgia is when there is a change in atmospheric pressure that uh, pressure uh, represents as a pain in tooth and that is called as barodontalgia it is usually seen in scuba divers and in pilots then uh, a word about anachoresis so anachoresis is when any blood borne bacteria or any foreign pro proteins they are attracted to the site of inflammation so anachoretic pulpitis mean from the blood stream if any infection occurs in the pulp like not like a direct route how you get dc and then pulpal infection instead from the blood route if you are getting any infection to the pulp through uh, the passage of root canal like from the blood reversely then it is called as anachoretic pulpitis so these are the points which you should note about uh, the pulp and periradicular tissues so whatever points which i have mentioned now if you have read about that and the mcq is related to it it is more than enough for that particular topic so make sure you always follow the plan whichever plan either the plan which you have mentioned now or whatever plan you have put it uh, you follow the plan and uh, be very very systematic in your preparation and always remember consistency is very very important when you are doing preparation so whether it is 2 hours or 4 hours you are studying that doesn't matter but you should do it continuously not like 2 days 3 days you are preparing and then you are leaving you should not do that do it at a very consistent constant uniform preparation throughout till the exam then definitely whatever aim you have you will definitely achieve it thank you